Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for coming. Can I be heard in the rear? Very well. Those of you who like, there's plenty of seats available. We encourage you to be seated and enjoy. This will be relatively brief. You hear me, folks? <laughs> Let me take just a moment, if I may, to um, acknowledge so many of you who have come that we're grateful for, for what you've meant to the development of this facility. We have representatives here today from Senator Richard Burr's office, from Congressman Price's office, and you'll hear from Maggie Snydecki from Representative Elmer's office. She brings comments here. Our Secretary of uh, State Department of Transportation, Tony Tata, his deputy, Mr. Walls, is here. Ed Grannis is our newest member of the State Board of Transportation. We're particularly indebted to his efforts. Our Mayor, Tony Schiavone, will speak with you later in what may be his final official act. Yeah, okay. Um, members of council who are here, thank you. I saw Bobby Hurst, DJ Hare. If I missed anyone, we, we appreciate your coming. Uh, County Commissioner uh, Charles Evans is here. Is that BR? BR King is here. We thank you all for coming. Members of the legislature that may be here and members of the Fayetteville Advisory Committee on Transit. That's my role. And those of us who are here, we're grateful for that. Colonel Jeffrey Sanborn, are you here? Fort Bragg Garrison Commander. A lot of projects we're working on with Fort Bragg. As you know, they, they operate under a number of economic constraints that we may be able to help them with. His associates, Doug Earl and Tim Shea. I was pleased that Harvey Gant came from Charlotte, the man who will leave a permanent mark on this facility. He, he, he designed it. Architect Harley Gant, Harvey Gant, you remember when he served as mayor of Charlotte, uh, two terms, uh, ran for two terms the state senate. Craig Hampton of, is, of course, the city projects director, and we're glad to have him here. If I've missed anyone, please accept my apologies. I'd like to call on now for a moment uh, uh, our director of human relations, Ron McElrath, to share the opening invocation. Thank you, Jeff. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come today to dedicate this facility and this ground to the people and to the community, and most of all, unto you, O Lord, that you will touch every step that's taken, that you'll touch every shovel that's dug of dirt, and Lord, that you'll touch the building, that it will be a glorification to you and to the people that have made it possible for this facility to occur. And Lord, we want to ask you that we understand this ground to be a visible sign of your provisions. It is a gift from your hand through its people, and today we humbly ask for you to bless the work of so many hands, all the work that will be done for decades to come in and through this facility. We thank you for the beauty of the design you, that you have provided a future and a hope. Thank you for the foresight of the city council and staff who many years ago, you gave them the vision and capacity for growth. We dedicate this entire area and ground where we pray today that all people will feel safe and welcomed. Lord, empower the city staff to provide godly wisdom and tender compassion to the hurting as unto you, Lord. Let the buildings st stand as a beacon of hope to the community and those who will be served through them. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for the provisions to serve our citizens, bless the stakeholders and partners, our local government, our state government, and our federal government. We offer this prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The vision for this facility goes back at least 11 years. When it was first discussed as a temporary facility, <laughs> temporary facility, a double wide trailer was located on Old Wilmington Road to accommodate our clients and patrons. In a couple of years time, this will replace that temporary facility. Congresswoman Renee Elmers could not be here. Congress, uh, I believe, uh, adjourns at three o'clock this afternoon, but she sent Maggie Sky Snydecki to represent her with some comments. Maggie Snydecki. Good afternoon. Uh, as he stated, uh, she is in D.C. still and apologizes for not being here, but has sent some comments. To the men and women of the Fayetteville Multimodal Transit Center Project, I would like to offer my congratulations to you all on the groundbreaking of Fayetteville's Multimodal Transit Center. 
Your efforts in constructing this facility are vital to improving the quality of life for our citizens and crucial to ensuring that the people of Fayetteville are transported in a safe, dependable, and efficient way. I am pleased to have supported the federal grants that made this center possible and commend the city's commitment to improving these public transit services. I am honored to have been invited to this event and wish I could be there to celebrate with you in person. This center's expansion will provide many new transportation options to Fayetteville citizens and you should all be commended for obtaining the LEED Silver Certification Standards. I know this center will greatly increase the percentage of riders while better serving those who have been longtime customers. Congratulations again on the completion of this center. I wish you all every success as you get closer to achieving your goals. Sincerely, Congresswoman Renee Elmers. Thank you, Maggie. We're particularly honored today to have Secretary Tata with us. He uh, is no stranger to Fayetteville Fort Bragg, having had an illustrious airborne career, now serving as Secretary of the State Department of Transportation. He knows firsthand the needs of a military community like this one. Probably ought to mention that the Federal Transit Administration last year granted our community eight million dollar grant as seed money to build this facility. The state and local governments each agreed to contribute another million dollars. We're going to hold that to you, Secretary. My pleasure. Please welcome Secretary of Transportation, Taylor. Thanks, Jeff. Indeed, it's uh, great to be back home. I uh, lived in uh, Fayetteville for uh, several years while I was a paratrooper out at uh, Fort Bragg. And um, while well, we've got all the EMS uh, going on, uh, I did want to say that uh, that's not part of the multimodal facility, uh, but uh, what we have here is a bus station that's going to be near a rail station that's going to help revitalize downtown and, and certainly with uh, the Fayetteville area system of uh, transit, the 1.5 million passengers you take every year and the 5,000 passengers you take every day. Uh, they will get the benefit from this facility. And every time I come back to Fayetteville or Fort Bragg, I notice how much we are inching toward uh, the improvements in downtown and, and the economic prosperity that is coming and, and has been delivered. And uh, congratulations to the mayor on, on uh, all the uh, great efforts and, and bringing this project to fruition. And thanks to the uh, team, uh, Richard Walls, the uh, Assistant Secretary for Transit, and Greg Burns, the Division Engineer, that have worked so hard in the area to help bring this vision of a revitalized downtown Fayetteville uh, to reality. I think it's a team effort, and this is the uh, picture-perfect image of collaboration and team effort between the city and the state and the federal and even Fort Bragg. And so I think uh, everybody here has a role, and I thank you all for that. Uh, and as we work together, we're going to do our best to uh, make sure that those funds are uh, delivered in a timely fashion. And uh, I wish everybody Godspeed in this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Our keynote speaker is a man who has literally dedicated himself to this community for the last eight years and has decided to venture into other areas. We're going to miss Mayor Shivani. It was not his vision, but he certainly was the driving force behind City Council's continuing commitment to the Fayetteville Area System of Transit over the last five years in particular. While this nation and, and state have suffered some economic issues, uh, many cities found it a relatively easy thing to do to cut back basic services like transportation. This community expanded services every fiscal year since 2008, including the current year uh, in which we are adding another bus route. So City Council and Mayor Shivani's uh, commitment in particular are responsible in great measure for what we see here today. Our thanks also to DJ Hare and to Bobby Hurst and others who've been serving on council. If any members elect are here, we, we welcome you on board and hope you'll continue this commitment that 
your predecessors have left. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend and yours, Mayor Tony Schiavone. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's uh, great to be with everybody. And on behalf of the Federal City Council and the 200,000 people that call Federal home, it's an honor to welcome you to this uh, long-awaited groundbreaking. Uh, to reflect on the changes that we've seen in our transit system over the last eight years, from dilapidated buses that couldn't run on time, to citizens standing outside in the cold and rain waiting on a bus, just hoping to get to work. You know, we've, we've come so far. Today marks the next important step as we break ground on the construction of a new multimodal center to add to our system. But it's much more than just the addition of a building. It's a restoration of dignity to our riders and to our, the pride of this city. There's so many reasons to celebrate today's long-awaited groundbreaking. I begin by saying we celebrate the success of working together. In today's political environment, when we most often see political divide and partisanship, this project is the example of the kind of success that we can see when government of all levels and all political parties work together for a common goal. We're joined today by representatives from the federal, state, and local government, Democrat and Republican, from city staff members and private sector partners. It took the diligent and coordinated efforts of each one of these groups to set aside differences to help us get to where we are today. We also celebrate determinedness, if that's a word. The idea of a multimodal center was first seriously discussed in our city over a decade ago. We celebrate the determined efforts of our city through multiple administrations and the efforts of Harvey Gann and his team who stood by us every step of the way. On a personal note, I especially want to thank all those city staff members in making sure that I could participate in this groundbreaking while still mayor. You barely made it. I never had any doubt that you would. <laughs> We also celebrate commitment. Our city's commitment to its mass transit system, which has been rewarded with a 90% increase in ridership in the last five years. An ongoing commitment of citizens, system users, staff members, and supporters here to celebrate with us this momentous occasion. More importantly, it's our commitment that, that, that as our city grows, no one gets left behind. We celebrate transformation. This multimodal transit center joins, in re joins recent openings of our award-winning parking garage, the Veterans Park, the Hope Six Project, and the recent groundbreaking of the Parkview Residential Complex that have combined for investments totaling almost $200 million in our downtown. They reflect tangible steps in the revitalization of our historic downtown and the most recent indicators of the historic image and economic transformation in our All-America City. And we celebrate courage. The political courage of multiple city councils who were willing to use the unpopular tool of eminent domain for a greater public good. DJ Hare, Bob Massey, Bill Chris, Bobby Hurst, Katie Ann Davey, Charles Evans, people willing to stand up and take important and politically damaging votes, to take many, actually, many stressful high-profile public votes over the last eight years to make sure that we kept this project on schedule and paid a significant price in political capital to get us to this groundbreaking today. That's the kind of courage we don't often recognize in elected people, and I commend each one of them for their involvement. And perhaps the greatest reason we celebrate today, a city's maturity that moves us past the days of falling into the trap of making the easy decision. The decisions that resulted in us having a coliseum complex far away from our hotels, a baseball field in our suburbs, and a jail in our downtown. A maturity that allows us to recognize that making the right decision is worth fighting for. This facility that we break ground for today is the right thing to do at the right time, at the right place. It reaffirms our commitment 
to not only making the right decisions for our citizens, but having the vision, the determination, the patience, and the commitment to make them happen. Let us all learn from that. Thank you all for being here. May God bless you, and God continue to bless our great city. Did he leave out leadership? That's what that's all about. I understand, Mr. Mayor, you have your own personal shovel, and that you have one more notch in it today. We're going to turn the dirt. So uh, whoever's in charge of that will take over at this point. And um, if you all step forward, Randy, are you going to be coordinating that? The official part of the program is over. We will now prepare to turn the dirt. If I could please, I think I've talked to some of you, but if, uh, if I have not, uh, could please join us. Of course, uh, Secretary Tata and uh, Mayor Shivani. Uh, Ed Granis, would you, if you would join us, please, I, I would really appreciate it. Uh, William Munn, uh, Councilwoman Katie Ann Davey, uh, Mr. Voorhees, our city manager. Uh, Jeff, you're going to help us. Uh, and then we have two of our bus operators, Donna Campbell and Paula Bowers. And I have to brag on Paula. Paula is our statewide bus rodeo champion, and she represented us well this last year. And then Harvey Gant and Craig Hampton, if you could join us, please. Yeah. <laughs> 